We return on Locked On Coyotes as we go through our player reviews of our Coyotes season and review. This time we're going through the last bit of our key players for the Arizona Coyotes. On today's episode, we are discussing Jacob Chikrin. So be sure to stay locked in. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio, Carl Pavlik, right beside me on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. We want to thank everyone for making Locked On Coyotes your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. And once again, that does mean we will never, ever have a paywall. But let's get into today's episode. We're talking Jacob Chikrin. Before we get to that, Carl, though, uh, we had a day off, so we're una- we were unable to talk about the latest freaking thing. So let's at least uh, you know, spend a little bit decent, maybe 10 minutes or so on what the frick just happened with the athletic from uh, from Katie Strang and uh, and, and uh, little Mr. Shapiro. Yeah, yeah. So it was, a, it was a fun time. The athletic posted an article, Coyote's agreement with ASU includes, quote, good behavior clause, unquote, or eh, whatever. It's a uh, for team, it's owner. I read that wrong, but you get the idea. It was uh, a pretty salacious headline that also included such things like the Coyotes would not ha- be able to have their logo at center ice. Uh, and then there was some actual like really interesting like breakdowns of stuff like alcohol, uh, beer advertisements not being loud. There was some like actual good stuff in here, but there was a lot of sensationalized stuff. Uh, I believe Craig Morgan called it that on uh, PHNX today. Uh, sensationalized is the best word for it. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that I think we all kind of assumed uh, going in because they seemed like they'd be standard things when dealing with the university, but I guess you got to make a headline. Yeah, it just sucks when it's, you know, at the expense of a team that's trying to, you know, rebuild its image, you know, leaving a city that kind of just treated them, treated them like crap. And although they also didn't do didn't do themselves any favor, but but why doing what they did in Glendale? But still, like I was trying to rebuild in some ways and like. Like they already know they're playing in a sh- in a shitty situation, you know. There's not much, yeah. Do, but they're building off of it. Um, but again, yeah, the sensation sensationalized thing was what really pissed me off because it's blatant misinformation, right? Yeah. It's like it doesn't take as like all it takes is a simple call to university to clarify the, the details of the document and be like, "Hey, can you explain this to me?" And for have them say, "Okay, good behavior clause." That's in most agreements with any public university, any public entity in the in the state of Arizona. Anything yeah. that's an agreement with um, the Arizona Board of Regents, they everything has a good behavior clause. Doesn't matter if you're a professional team. Doesn't matter if you are a government entity. Doesn't matter if you are a you know a business. It all has it. And and I saw someone or a couple people like tweet out um, that. It doesn't happen for larger institutions like an NHL team. And I just have to assume that that is absolute crap, uh, especially in the era that we are in now where publicity is so important, where having a like, you know, board member say or do something could seriously hamper any kind of business. And you want to make sure that you could like be there. Like the good behavior clause was just like, yeah, man, if you really mess up, I don't want you associated with my alma mater. Like that, that is like one of those things where people were assuming it meant stuff like the tax story. And I theoretically, sure. 
like a tax story could really impact a state university. That seems like very like just understandable. But you also have to remember that tax story was basically fed to the athletic from the city of Glendale. There are yeah. so many quotes in there. Like they they clearly were wanting to get a story and the athletic is always willing to publish something that's anti coyotes for clicks. That's the big thing, clicks, right? Because like, yeah. like on that day, more coyote, more like more clicks were generated towards a coyotes article than playoff content. Why? Yeah. Because people love to slander the airs on the coyotes. It just <laughs> happens to be that way. <laughs> And uh, just so we're addressing the other major part of it, uh, yes, the Coyotes will be able to have a logo at Center Ice. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a joint logo with them and ASU. Uh, the, I, I don't. The details of that was, um, and it's from what the, what the basic is. The the Coyotes cannot alter the look of the ice surface of what ASU implements on there. Doesn't say yeah. anything about you know coming up together with what they're going to make because it's still a together thing. The Coyotes just can't make changes. Yeah, um, the, the Coyotes can't unilaterally make changes to something. Like, I'm sure if, like, something happens and... Because all the, because the on-ice advertisers and the, and the board advertisers are all going to be ASU, like, coming through the university... The, the ASU State... Yes, Arizona State University's revenue source. Like, it's going to... Like, yeah, that's just the way that's going to be. So like, um, but they're working together. Um, and yeah, with, if, if anyone thought it was just going to be a pitchfork at the ice in center ice, no, the coyote, there is going to be some form of a, you know, both the pitchfork and the, uh, the coyote the question yeah. is, what is it going to be? We don't know, but it's going to be some, some way that they're going to put both entities on there. Yeah. And, and I mean, I don't see why you would assume that they wouldn't like people are like looking at this agreement in a hostile way where like these aren't like two sides like coming together to make decisions about everything. Like I, I don't understand like the mindset where they're like, oh, is this how like the college is going to get out of the agreement it's like the college is willfully entering into a three-year partnership like potentially four yeah potentially four like and yeah like i'm sure asu is like look this is our school don't don't change stuff because we need to make sure that it's approved by like our things asu is held to a very high standards as a public institution like yeah. And, uh, and they're held by the standards of the heirs on the board of regents who makes yeah. any different who, – who they approve any change that happens on public land. Yeah. That includes Arizona State University, Northern Arizona University, and, Arizona, and University of Arizona. I just – guess what? Anything that changes has to go through them. Yeah. I, I am just very thankful that this story didn't seem to spread as far as it could have. Uh, I think I saw uh, like Sportsnet, like so. So TSN posted it the next morning. They posted that graphic the next morning, saying that, and then uh, within about three or four hours, they deleted the graphic off their tweet. Yep. And then they updated with a link to the Jose Romero article because uh, he also wrote a, a great breakdown of this um, and kind of definitely something I would encourage everyone to read. Uh, NBC 12, local station, uh, unfortunately ran with this story uh, and then have since corrected it. But, you know, it didn't really make the the rounds of hockey media that it could have. I think everyone kind of realized that this was like a nothing burger. Like it got a lot of comments, but I didn't see too many people being like, too many serious people being like, this is concerning. Because yeah, it's not yeah. like. It only the only people that are still taught that are still trying to attack the coyotes are the ultra anti fans. Yeah. Who are literally <laughs> just trying to crap on the coyotes on any chance they get. And guess what? Today, as we talked this morning, Carl, it's still happening. Yeah. It's it's annoying, but I I, I am just used to those people. I'm just glad that it's no one like 
no one like seriously fell for this clearly clickbait garbage story. Like at least not, not as many people as could have. Like yeah. I could definitely see this being like something that spreads pretty like far because a lot of coyote stories spread pretty far. This one seemed like mostly contained yeah, uh, at least within, from my perspective within a good 24 hours, it kind of already died in its tracks, but which is a good thing. Um, yeah. I will say too, you know, I did address it with, uh, with, with some other hosts of the locked on network and the NHL channel. I'm like, by the way, if anyone, if anyone wants to run the story and talk about what's going on, run it by me first, because yeah. we're here inside the state. We understand the full scope of what's going on. Yeah. If like, if like last thing we want is for you guys to get, to get, you know, lumped into a misinformation scandal. Cause that's just, it, it just does not make anyone look good. Yeah. And it's, it's really easy to like fact check, like any kind of coyote story. Uh, as, as pointed out, like Craig Morgan had details about the, the center ice logo mm -hmm. weeks ago. Uh, Jose Romero was able to just call and be like, Hey, can you confirm this stuff? And they're like, yeah. Uh, good good behavior clauses are standard, and yeah, this is the details about the contract. It's a it's a public thing. We can tell you. It's, it's pretty uh, simple. Yeah, just yeah. Works like that. Yeah, works like that. So, but yeah, I mean, we're um we're glad that it didn't get too much traction. But again, like we said, there's still some people out there that are still taking it, mainly just fans who are just gonna take it because. But, you know, like you said, we're glad glad it didn't go much further than that after the first 24 hours after it put, got published. And that as we speak now, it's been well over that since then. And for the most part, has every, every like most news outlets have rectified the information. If not really correct, they didn't really correct it, but they've pointed to the right information. Yeah, they've further clarified. Yes, there we go. That's the way to, uh, to put it. And that's how it works in journalism. I mean, like, unfortunately, some people are going to go, you know, try to be the first out there and we'll get some some stuff incorrect. That happens with journalism, unfortunately, now these days. Um, as someone who studied journalism, I know that. Um, but I'm also someone who's you know, personally very, very keen on making sure the facts are correct before running a story. Yep. Uh, but... That doesn't get the clicks, Robin. You got to get the clicks. Yeah, well, well, I have a podcast, Carl. We have a podcast. I can go ahead and I, I can go ahead and rant for twelve minutes, <laughs> and <laughs> still get clicks. Yeah. <laughs> Although we should probably wrap up the ramp and actually uh, talk right. about You're Jacob Chikrin. You're right. We should. We should. But we'll do that in just a moment. But first, a quick word from Carl. So I have a message for everyone out there. We're, we're talking about a lot of stuff that we don't like. I'm going to talk about something I do like. I really like brownies. But do you know what I like more? Brownie batter. Uh, sometimes I will, you know, making some brownies, I will always make sure to get plenty of batter. Even though you're not really supposed to, you know, the eggs, raw flour, eh, who's going to say anything? But imagine if instead of doing that, Instead of risking salmonella, you could get that brownie batter flavor with some protein. Well, you're in luck because Built has a new creation, and this one is better than ever. The brownie batter puff. You heard me right. This puff takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. With 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams of sugar, brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for any day what i want you to do is go to built.com and use the promo code locked 15 to get 15 percent off your order that's promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off at built.com well thanks again everyone for making locked on coyotes your first listen now, afterwards, don't forget to check out the Locked On Now podcast. They got nightly recaps of every NHL game and with analysis from our local experts. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And I know a lot of you guys want to check it out because we got a fun battle of Alberta going on. If you missed the first game, that was a wild one. But let's get back to this show because we got a player review to do still. And uh, 
It's a good one, Carl, because we're talking Jacob Chikrin. We got it. first, of course. Let's talk about what we liked and what we needed to see more of, because you know, let's 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 put it out there. There's definitely a lot that this kid could have done, because he had a slow start, a very yeah. slow start, um, which we were worried about. For he picked things up a little bit later on, later on, but still was pretty quiet for the most part than what we're used to from seeing Jacob for seeing Jacob Chikrin. Yeah, I, I do want to point out that in two of his last three games, he had two goals. He had two goals against the Toronto Maple Leafs, two against the Detroit Red Wings. Um, he unfortunately dealt with a lot of injuries. That's going to really affect your flow. Uh, let's also be extremely real. There was a lot more pressure on Jacob Chikrin this year than there has ever been in his career. Mm-hmm. Um did he handle it the best way? Uh, I, I don't think so, but it's a very difficult, you know, thing to have happen. And, you know, he can definitely like recover. He can take that next step. Uh, I, it's going to be uh, an interesting off season for him though. Cause I don't know if the rumors are going away. Yeah. People definitely expected Jacob Chikrin to be the number one D man for the Arizona Coyotes going into the season. Mm-hmm. Because he was, because again, everyone was, you know, last year they were going hashtag Chick Norris, you know, put this guy in the Norris trophy list, you know, yeah. and, it beca- and and rightfully so. He was the highest scoring D-man in the league last year. Yeah. And he, he was good. He had a phenomenal season. Um, he was playing on the second pairing that year uh, with Oliver Ekman Larson taking up a majority of like the big minutes and you know this year he didn't have that luxury and he wasn't able to get you know the same amount of offense uh he didn't he wasn't a slouch uh you know seven goals 14 assists but that's uh that's a long way from last season with 18 and 23 yeah and a lot of that was again picked up towards the second half of the season Mm -hmm. because again that first half was considerably slow. He didn't get his first goal until like what, you know, fifteen games in or something like that. Uh, like. yeah. His first goal was November thirteenth against the Nashville Predators. So about a week, about a I'm about, about a month in. Yeah, month in. Yeah, which is very not like the usual Jago Chicken we're used to. Uh, yeah. And again, like we said, that a lot of that is because you know the pressure built on of being expected to be the number one D man. Like you, you expect that out of a freaking twenty uh, three year old. Like, come on, like. <laughs> Which I mean, I think it it goes to something that we were talking about earlier um, when we talked about Shane Gostasper. He had a really good start because he was getting those kind of minutes, um, and Chikrin was having to do the tough minutes, and you know. He wasn't, you know, the best at making that adjustment. Uh, The Coyotes definitely gave up a lot of goals with him on the ice. But, you know, he still, you know, found a way to turn around. He eventually made it, which is what you really want to see. And again, he dealt with a lot of injuries this Mm -hmm. year. It was... He only played 53 games. Yeah. Or, sorry, 47 games. 47 games, that's not nearly enough. That's a little more than half the season. Like, that's, yeah. That's, that's quite a lot of game. That's, that's quite a lot of man games lost right there. And, like, and you can't get into the flow. Like, you're constantly being interrupted. He's probably in pain, too. Like, let's not underscore the pain aspect of, of being injured. Oh, yeah. No, right. Because, especially if, like, what, what was it for him? Lower body? I think so, yeah. Yeah, which obviously can make a huge effect too. Yeah, and, and lower body is also one of those things where you find out that you can actually play with an injury. Uh, I think Oliver Ekman Larson played most of the year with a broken foot a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was just, you know, like, yeah, you can still skate. Just hurts like hell. Yeah. I hate to be the one to, uh, to sensationalize the idea of toughness with lower body injuries because – uh that's a major problem in the national hockey like something i don't a rabbit hole i don't want to go down because freaking opiates and what's <laughs> yeah. going on there but 
Yeah, it, it's definitely like uh, the the playing through the pain aspect of it. Uh, from like a practical standpoint, like it's not great for your health. I also think it like when you guys, when I say that like a defenseman can skate with a broken foot, it's noticeable. Like you can tell. Mm -hmm. Like you can't know exactly what it is, but you're like. They don't look good. They are not playing well. They are missing assignments. They're clearly in pain. So I, I, I often wonder if like athletes make that sacrifice and like if, if things would be better if they just gave themselves the time to heal. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. I mean, like, I'm we're glad Chikrin took, you know, games off. Right. And he, yeah. he, 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 he gave himself the time off he needed to. And again, um, because, you know, like you want to make sure that someone like him gets the max potential possible. Because again, he is, uh, you know, a good solid defenseman. And I really, and I, you know, I think that, you know, despite his, the problems that he had this year, he's easily capable of having, you know, a good, you know, a good season of, of any metric for, a, for, 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 an, for an offensive D man. Because let's, you know, Let's be real. The kid's only 24 now. Like he's like we talked about last year that D man take longer to develop. And the fact yeah. that he's only 24 and he's still he's good and has a lot of room to grow. Like by the time this kid reaches his prime, he'll be really good. Yeah, he is still years away from his prime. Um and I I I think he can definitely continue to improve. Um, I, I do wonder if that will be with the Coyotes or not, because another thing that I'm sure weighed heavily on Chikrin's mind was, am I going to be traded this year? Because there was rumors almost immediately. Yeah, I mean, the, most of those rumors were slower to start off with. Yeah, But they came, they slowly came back as he struggled throughout the year. In fact, we're going to talk to more about stuff like that in just a moment. But first, I got a couple words from you guys from uh, our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is our continues to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest odds and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, major league baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Plus, the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs er, is underway. Who do you got in the Battle of Florida? Who do you got in the Battle of Alberta? You've got many picks to go with Bet Online. Today is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use a mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online is where the game starts. So let's now get ready to grade. Jacob Chikrin's year and to talk about his future. Carl? Oh, so I get to start. Yeah. Um, we're, 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 we're going back and forth each time on who goes first. Sure we are. Uh, I think this season was unfortunately a disappointment for Chikrin. Mm -hmm. um, of all the players that needed to step up, I think Chikrin was definitely one of them. And unfortunately, I, I don't think he did that as well as he could. Uh, I am giving him a C for the season. You were you're like you and I were always very close. Like I was like, I, like you know, at the beginning, like I was thinking, it's like, do I want to give him a B minus? But then again, like he, that start he had and the expectations, and I take expectations into account, of course, and our expectations were high. And it just wasn't met, and a lot of those factors. So, like as you were getting ready to talk, and just like I, I was thinking in my head, I'm gonna get ready to say C. I'm gonna get ready to say C, no matter what the thing is. And yeah, it's unfortunately, you know, as much of a star as Jacob Chagrin is, did not have a great season. And C, which still isn't terrible, C is considered average. But yeah. And I do think it's kind of, um, you know, the other players that we talked about, players like uh, Keller and Schmaltz, like the expectations for them were kind of low. Mm -hmm. 
and they and they beyond exceeded. exceeded. Yeah, expectations for Chikrin were high, and he fell short. So I do think that that is it is a harsh partially, thing to grade off to, to grade off, but it's also like rightfully so. We were right in 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 having those expectations because of what he did last year and because of what we know he's capable of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just think that it's definitely something where you know we are gonna wanna. I'm gonna be looking in for next year to evaluate, like set my expectations correctly. And I think like looking at a player like Chikrin and seeing the year he had based off the expectations. Use that to calibrate your expectations for next year. Yeah, absolutely. Let's put it that that, put, that does put us though into the conversation though is how does Chikrin play into the Coyotes' rebuild plans? Because the t- once this year started going through midway through the trade talk, it flipped because it went from Jacob Chikrin, the untouchable, to uh, and Clayton Killer, the tradable K- Keller, the tradable to Clayton Keller, the untouchable, and Jacob Tricker, the tradable. Yeah. Um, I honestly do not know. I think that the only person who knows right now if Jacob Tricker is going to be traded is Bill Armstrong and maybe like three other GMs. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I think that that is very unfortunate. Uh, I think that Tricker needs to make sure that he is like we need to make sure that chicken is the team needs to make sure that chicken is informed the entire way because it did seem like his like you know the is it gonna be like is he gonna be traded that seemed to affect him like the quotes you got like at the end of the year kind of locker room clean out at locker room clean out it almost seemed as if he already had one foot out the door that he kind of expected to leave but he just didn't know, and it made things worse, I think. Um, yeah. And um, I think the best course of act, one of the best things to do is, you know, to be, is, and, I, and I'm sure that, like, because again, we're not behind the closed doors. Maybe Bill Armstrong has had a conversation with Jekman and be like, hey, just so you know, we are going to, we're going to be listening to offers for you. Yeah. Um, and it, like, and like, and like, and he was the other thing and like maybe for his for his sake is like feel free to be a part of this conversation as well because you know like we want you to be to know at least what's going on i mean honestly at this point i feel like you can't just do we're listening to offers anymore we had a whole season of listening to offers you either trade them like before the draft trade them in the in the off season or you don't trade him this season. Like, unless there's, like, a massive change. Like, if Jacob Chikrin is still with the team at the start, I do not want to have the distraction of, is the team going to trade him at any point during the season? I don't want that. I'm sure Chikrin doesn't want that. I'm sure no one on the team wants that. Yeah. Like, but but it needs to happen. Like that was the thing I disliked the most about Bill Armstrong this season. Going from this player is untouchable to well, we're listening to offers. Like that is that that sends a bad signal to the player that you that you that you thought of as your star player. Yeah. I don't know how I would perform if that happened. Because like that is a very mixed message. And now, here's like with that, and here's what I hope happens. And here's, a, and that's, a, and here, and here's the huge thing. It's, it's emphasis on hope because this very well could not, well, could, could not be the case. Jacob Chikrin doesn't get traded because a, there are not enough offers out there. So that helps out. And then B it, like, you know, they can see it as a second opportunity here because, um, and that goes back to the whole last year situation. And it's going to continue through the rebuild where every single player has something to prove. Yeah. In this case, if Jacob Chikrin can prove that he can be a cornerstone piece to the Coyotes rebuild. Yeah. And Which I think he can. Like, yeah, he is absolutely. due for a bounce back. 
Absolutely. I think this year, this last year was a complete one off and that it definitely was a lot of us were surprised because this is not the Jacob Chikrin we're used to seeing. So we mm-hmm. got to see. So like, obviously, he's definitely bound for a rebound. Um, and the good thing is it doesn't really hurt the Coyotes in this case because his con- it's not like his contract is, you know, like, you know, weighing them down. He's got a very friendly contract on him. <laughs> Yeah, he's got uh, three more years, four point six million. Yeah, very friendly. Um, he can easily, you know, be a player that that players above that salary level, as we saw in the case where, you know, the last couple of years when Clayton Keller was not playing to his contract, and all of a sudden this last year is like, oh crap, maybe he can. Yep, absolutely. Like it is, you know. It's it's one of the reasons why Chikrin is such a tradable player because he has such a team friendly contract, and sure that is, you know, great for trading him, but it's also just great for the Coyotes. Yeah, and let's uh, let's play hypotheticals here. Let's say he does get traded because here's a, a you know again a very real op- a very very real you know thing that could still happen. He does get traded. If anything, in my opinion, Carl. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen before the draft because he can easily pick up something of a high value. I think so. Uh, I It does seem like a, a draft move, although I really don't – Yeah, uh, I, I think it would be before the draft. The offseason could still happen, but that just seems too late for a player like Chikrin. If, if like, it does – if it does go in the off season, it's a high level for like a first round pick in the 2023 draft. Like, yeah. Which, you know, could very well help. Like depending on who tries to acquire can boost the odds of the coyotes getting Connor Bedard next year. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Cause as we've, as we saw this past season, like just anyone can fall to the very bottom of the league. Just make sure it's not top 10 protected. Yep. Instead, just yeah, just somehow. I mean, Bill Armstrong is like he's great of traits, so yeah, he'll know. He'll know what to do. <laughs> he'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah, I, I I do expect Bill Armstrong to figure this out. Uh, I uh, if I sounded in any way like indignant, I trust him to to handle the situation. And there's a lot to it that we do not know about. Like we are only observing this from the offsides and like seeing things that are being said, like no one really knows, like except for the people involved and their immediate family, what these conversations are like, how informed Chikrin is, how like open uh, Armstrong is. Uh, I just, I, I just want to make sure that the players and the team are taken care of. Yeah, exactly. And again, um, to kind of like put things in that show, you and I both, believe that he should at least get this one last chance with the coyotes to prove his spot yeah yeah uh i I still think he's a he's a great player and i mean even if it's like maybe getting getting like someone to be with him like a more veteran presence i think that would definitely be very beneficial like he Played without his longtime partner Alex Golgoski for the first time this season mm-hmm. in a long time, which is something that we didn't even get a chance to talk to uh, or talk about. Like Chikrin had a very different first year. There's some growing pains. A completely I trust, different system. Yeah, I, I trust that he will be ready and look great at the start of this next season for the coyotes or whatever team he's with. You'll have another year with, uh, with, with ghost bear, which maybe that can make him look, you know, them working with the, working out with each other. Uh, maybe, yeah. or the team's got to get like a veteran, uh, defenseman. Uh, I, I don't even know what the blue line is going to be next season for the coyotes. No, uh, which is funny because last year we thought the blue line was going to be like some kind of silver lining, but it wasn't. No, no, it really wasn't. <laughs> because we were we were like, oh yeah, you know, Connor Timmins and these people, they're coming in, they're supposed to be, you know, good. And 
you're like, oh. Yeah. Did not turn out that way. No, it didn't. Which is why I definitely have to find part, like, you know, Jacob Trigger and a solid partner because, you know, um, the Roadrunners ain't going to cut it for now. I mean, did they did they, did they hold their own to fort at the end of the year? Well, kind of. No. But uh, yeah, they did like, their they did the bare minimum. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's yeah, uh, and it'll be interesting to see what moves are made with the Coyotes blue line because, I mean, right now we're talking about potentially trading the biggest piece of it. So yep. it's really hard to speculate on how how things are going to go, but if they keep Chikrin. Get him a veteran leg like, partner. Just just do that. He he cannot like I don't want to see him spend another season like trying to help someone who's you know um, called up from the AHL. Like that's not what you need in those kind of situations. He also you you also want to make sure that you can get a um, you can easily get a shutdown defenseman who can cover the right side. Like sure. Like because all because like. Because I I know from somewhat ex- decent amount of experience, just you know, going around hockey, two offensive defensemen on a same pairing ain't gonna work. Yeah. So you need you need you need a solid stay at home D man right next to him. Absolutely agree. Anyways, though, we're out of time on this episode of Locked On Coyotes. If you like what you heard, don't leave a review, like, comment, subscribe. If you have yet to already, we're available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube. Don't forget to interact with us on social media. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Locked On Coyotes, on Instagram, Locked On Coyotes, and on Twitter at LO underscore Coyotes. I am personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Carl Pavlock is Carl Pavlock F. Interact with us, ask the question you might have, and may answer right back, or on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. As a reminder, everyone, we're going to continue through our player reviews through the next couple weeks. We're going to slowly get into into some of the depth players and group and go, group some of those closer together, as well as get more get more draft profiles in as we continue through the top picks in the 2022 NHL entry draft in Montreal. So we're going to get through those. As well as we continue through the off season. Anyways, that's it for today. Today's episode. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy and, of course, cool because it is warming up out there. And don't forget to howl on. <laughs>